Madam President. Majority Leader. Madam President, first woman president pro tem of the United States Senate. Earlier this morning, we lost a giant in the Senate. Senator Dianne Feinstein was one of the most amazing people who ever graced the Senate, who ever graced the country. She had so many amazing, wonderful qualities wrapped up in one incredible human being. She was smart. She was strong. She was brave. She was compassionate. But maybe the trait that stood out most of all was her amazing integrity. Her integrity was a diamond. Her integrity shone like a beacon across the Senate and across the country for all to see and hopefully emulate. Dianne Feinstein would typically say, when you asked her how was she voting on something, let me study this issue before taking a position. Let me go home and read on it. And when she came back, if she believed the cause or the vote was right, and vital to many issues she cared about, she not only voted for it, there was no stopping her in getting it done. She would take on any force, any special interest, any opponent with, ruth, with relentless integrity and would wear those opponents down until she succeeded. Again, her integrity just shone through them and she won and she won, and she won, and each time made the country a better place. I saw this up close when she passed the assault weapons ban, a passion of hers after what happened to her in California. The NRA was a relentless, often mean-spirited and chauvinistic foe. They oozed vitriol against her, but they didn't scare her, they didn't stop her and they failed against her. Like most of her opponents, they failed against her. Her perseverance, her strength, and most of all, her integrity shone through. I was privileged to carry the bill in the House after she had passed it in the Senate. She guided me every step of the way, and her strength and her integrity strengthened all of us who were fighting that uphill fight. And, and as we went through that bill, it became clear to me, Dianne Feinstein is not like the others. She's in a class of her own. Of course, it wasn't just the assault weapons ban she fought for. Her accomplishments also included championing the Violence Against Women Act protecting oversight authority during the investigation into U.S. torture, fighting for climate justice, fighting for marriage equality, fighting for reproductive justice. The list goes on and on. As chair of the Intelligence Committee, Diane fought for what was right, even if it was hard and difficult and took months and years to dig in and find out what actually went wrong. She never stopped. She took on the CIA and asserted Congress's oversight authority during the investigation into United States use of torture. And through all of her accomplishments, this one and all the others, she always displayed the quintessential grace and strength. None of these sons of guns against her ever rattled her. I remember a few years back when a particularly nasty senator tried to put Senator Feinstein down in a, in a condescending, many would say chauvinistic way. She reacted not defensively, but with strength and poise and integrity. And within three minutes, she put this colleague in her place, in his place. And by the end of it, everyone in the room on both sides of the aisle was smiling. That was Diane to a, to a T, powerful, prepared, unflappable. She had to be. Whenever she did something, she was often the first to do it. 
She was elected as the first woman president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, the first woman to serve as mayor of San Francisco, the first woman to serve as U.S. Senator for California, the first woman to chair both the Senate Rules and Intelligence Committees, the first woman member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Our nation will be forever thankful to Senator Feinstein for the accomplishments she fought for. I too am personally indebted to Diane, not just as a colleague, which of course I am in so many ways as a colleague, but as a friend and as a father of two daughters. Diane's work extended far beyond the United States Senate floor as she gave a voice, a platform, and a leader to women throughout the country for decades. Diane didn't just put, push down doors that were closed for women. She held them open for generations of women after her to follow her. She gave a voice, a platform, a model for women across the country who aspire to roles in leadership, in public service, who want to leave their own mark on the world, who want to make this country a better place for others. Today, there are 25 women serving in this chamber, and every one of them would admit they stand on Diane's shoulders. So Diane's impact extended far beyond the Senate floor and far beyond politics itself. So today, we grieve. We look at that desk, and we know what we have lost. But we also give thanks. Thanks to someone so rarefied, so brave, so graceful a presence served in this chamber, for so, that someone like that served in this chamber for so many years. In closing, let me just say this. The sign of a leader is someone who dedicates the whole of their spirit for a cause greater than themselves. The sign of a hero is someone who fights for others, who endures for others, no matter the cost, no matter the odds. And the sign of a friend is someone who stands by your side to fight the good fight on the good days and on the bad. Diane Feinstein was all of this and more, a friend, a hero for so many, a leader who changed the nation, sorry, a leader who changed the nature of the Senate and who changed the fabric of the nation, America, for the better. As the nation mourns this tremendous loss, we're comforted in knowing how many mountains Diane moved, how many lives she impacted, how many glass ceilings she shattered along the way. America, America is a better place because of Senator Dianne Feinstein. Today I join with my colleagues in mourning our beloved friend and colleague. Yield the floor. Mr. President. The Republican leader. You know how we all refer to each other as my friend from whatever state it is. Honestly, frequently that's not true. Um, but Elaine and I were actual friends of Dick and Diane. Elaine served on a corporate board with Dick for a number of years. When they were in town together, we would frequently have dinner together. Elaine and I got married shortly after the 92 election. And I remember that Diane gave us a small depiction of the Capitol. I looked at it this morning because it's still on the wall and uh, remembered our dear colleague as a truly remarkable individual. As the <clears throat> majority leader has pointed out, she was an incredibly effective person at every line, at every level, and she was at all of those levels on the way to the Senate. Those of us who were fortunate to call Diane our colleague can say we served alongside 
the longest serving female senator in American history. Diane was a trailblazer in her beloved home state of California and our entire nation are better for her dogged advocacy and diligent service. Over the past three decades, the senior senator from California was also the steady hand leading sensitive and consequential work as head of the Intelligence Committee and the Judiciary Committee. Her name became synonymous with advocacy for women and with issues from water infrastructure to counter drug efforts. Of course, the first woman <clears throat> to lead her hometown's Board of Supervisors and then govern as mayor was making history and making a difference long before she came to the Senate. And as much as this institution and the American people will remember Diane's devoted public service, as I indicated earlier, Elaine and I will also remember and cherish a friendship of 30 years we were fortunate to share with Diane and Dick. So today I know the entire Senate family is gathering around Senator Feinstein's loyal staff. Our thoughts and prayers are with Diane's daughter, Catherine, her granddaughter, Eileen, the entire Feinstein, Feinstein family, and with all who mourn our dear colleague and friend.